ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين In the name of Allah, the compassion, the merciful, all praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions and all of his followers until the day of resurrection I welcome you to this new episode from the series Glimpses from the Fragment prophetic biography of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Today I'm talking about this very special topic and it is important to know the status of the mothers of the believers, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to learn more about our own mothers and these are the mothers of the believers. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made it lawful for any man, any Muslim to marry up to four women based of course on some conditions but then uh, for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one of his own peculiarities is that he was admitted to marry more than one and we will come to the reason uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming episode why uh, was the there was a need for the Prophet peace be upon him or why, why was he allowed to marry more than four wives. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, how the number of his own wives. Well, he married 11 women, six of them were from Quraysh, and he died when seven, when nine were still alive. So he uh, outlived uh, the, the, uh, the nine, uh, two actually, he outlived two, but still he uh, left uh, this life and departed this life when there are still uh, nine of his wives alive and he married uh, Maria al qibtiya who gave him uh, uh, who gave birth to Ibrahim uh, his own son first the first wife the prophet peace be upon him married was Khadija bint Khuwailid al qurashiya al Asadiyya radiyallahu anha now he married her in Mecca and his age was 25 her age was 40 and she actually married two men before the Prophet peace be upon him and she gave birth to some children and she uh, became a Muslim after she knew about the Prophet peace be upon him and uh, she accepted his call to Islam uh, Jibreel alayhi salam uh, actually conveyed to her uh, through the Prophet peace be upon him uh, uh, his, uh, Allah's greeting subhanahu wa ta'ala he also gave her the glad tiding of a house in paradise she died in Mecca at the uh, 10th year of, uh, of the Prophet's mission and he was very very uh, 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 keen to, to keep her in mind and to be uh, loyal to her even after her, her, her death, uh, may Allah be pleased with her and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Now Khadija was first wife and she supported him when we know how she stood by him throughout the time from the time when, he, when, it, when the Quran was revealed, when, when he saw Jibreel and he was very fearful and she, he came back home and she said, cover me up, cover me up and they, uh, she was the one who stood by him, who supported him fully and in fact she said something that gave him, uh, uh, that raised his spirit so high. She said, Wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abadan. Allah will never uh, put you down because of all the good things that, uh, that you did. And then the second one was Sauda bin Tuzam'ah al qurashiya al amiriya may Allah be pleased with her. Now, she was married to her cousin, as sakran ibn Amr. She was one of the ones who migrated to Abyssinia, and then her uh, husband died, and uh, 
she was mentioned to the Prophet by Khawla bint Hakim uh, uh, عنها, and then uh, this was after the uh, death of Khadija so the Prophet peace be upon him married her in Mecca and she lived after uh, uh, she lived uh, 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 for, for some time long time in fact until she died in Medina in the year uh, the 54th year of Hijra and uh, when she got so old no the prophet peace be upon him used to give uh, days for uh, a day like for every uh, one of his wives she w she volunteered her day for Aisha may Allah be pleased with both so that was Sauda bintu Zam'a radiyallahu anha thirdly was Aisha bintu Abi Bakr al-Siddiq uh, al-Qurashiya al-Taymiya radiyallahu anha now we know we know that Aisha radiyallahu anha was the only one who was virgin when she married the Prophet, peace be upon him. He married her in Mecca, uh, meaning the, uh, uh, the marriage uh, contract uh, was done in Mecca, but he did not consummate the, uh, the marriage until he came to Medina when she was uh, uh, nine or more. And he, uh, as I said, never married a virgin woman other than Aisha because of this great uh, relationship between him and her father Abu Bakr al Siddiq, who's very, very close uh, uh, friend and and uh, companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. We know what happened. Uh, Aisha was was very close to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and she served him very well. She uh, she was that's why the hypocrites actually uh, made this uh, terrible slander. Um, regarding her honor when she left, uh, was left behind uh, coming back from the uh, Bani al-Mustaliq um, uh, expedition and then uh, when she came back and then uh, uh, Safwan ibn al-Mu'attil found her and he took her along until they caught the army um, the following day and then the rumors started to spread that there was some kind of a relationship between her and Safwan and therefore uh, they gave the slander. She waited for more than a month when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally revealed her uh, innocence and to uh, defend her and clarify this, uh, uh, you know, s this uh, attack on her and the slander. And she uh, then, uh, where in Surah An-Nur, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ لَا تَحْسَبُوهُ شَرًّا لَكُمْ بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ So those who brought this slander among them, don't think that it was bad for you. It was indeed good for you. But it disclosed uh, the hypocrites and showed the status of Aisha and the status of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the uh, and protecting his honor, alayhi uh, salatu wasalam. She... Uh, was an insider in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. That's why she uh, reported many hadiths. In fact, more than 2,400 hadiths or uh, reports of the sayings and actions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, were reported by her. And she uh, stayed um, in Medina and she died in Medina in the month of Ramadan in the year 58th of Hijrah. And she died here in her own room, but then she was taken to al baqia because she actually gave her place uh, in her room to the Prophet, peace be upon him, to his own two companions, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. Now the fourth one was Hafsa bintu Umar ibn al-Khattab al-Qurashiya al-Adawiya, radiallahu anha. Now this is the fourth wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He, uh, she married uh, Khunais ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi, she migrated with him to uh, Medina. He witnessed both Badr and Uhud, and then he was uh, injured in Uhud, and he died out of uh, that injury. And then her own uh, uh, father, actually, uh, Umar, uh, Father Umar, uh, uh, asked Abu Bakr to marry her, and then uh, Abu Bakr did not respond. And then Uthman actually was offered to marry her, but he did not respond, thinking that the Prophet ﷺ might be interested in her. And then um, she uh, got married to the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, she used to keep the uh, scrolls 
of the glorious Quran, which later on became where the Mus'hafs were written from, and then she died in Medina in the month of Shaban and the year 50 or 40, 45th uh, year of Hijrah. So that was Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uh, the fifth one was Zainab bint Khuzayma al Hilaliya from Hawazin radiallahu anha. Zainab bint Khuzayma uh, was married to At Tufail ibn al Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib, who divorced her, and then his own brother Ubaidah ibn al Harith married her, and then he was injured in the Battle of Badr, and then uh, he died because of that, and then Abdullah ibn Jahsh uh, married her, who then later on became a martyr in Uhud. So these are three people who married Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu anha before she got married to the Prophet peace be upon him and he gave her a dowry of 400 dirhams and then she died during his life alayhi salatu wasalam just only a few months after she got married to the Prophet peace be upon him then he uh, offered the funeral prayer upon her and then he uh, buried her here in al Baqiya in the third year of Hijrah, that was Zainab bint Khuzayma radiallahu anha wa ardaha. And then sixthly, we have Ummu Salama Hind bint Abi Umayya al-Qurashiya al-Makhzumiya. Ummu Salama radiallahu anha was a very known to be a, a, a wise woman, a woman with full understanding, with all the good uh, uh, qualities uh, in a woman, she is, uh, uh, her father was known as uh, uh, Zad al-Rakib. Uh, first, she got married to her cousin, Abdullah ibn Abdul Asad al-Makhzumi. She traveled uh, and migrated with him to Abyssinia. Then she tried to uh, accompany her, him to Medina. Her family objected to that and kept her. In fact, they took even her son, Salama, uh, uh, they pulled him out until they uh, 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 pulled his shoulder out uh, f because of that and, 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 the, and the boy was suffering because of this. She stayed one year um, uh, uh, crying and, and, and seeking to go to Mecca to join the Muslims who migrated to Medina. Uh, every uh, every day, uh, other day she would be uh, going out in the, in the way of Medina uh, uh, just only to, to seek some help from anyone. Finally, one man uh, interceded for her until she joined her husband. Uh, and then in the battle of Uhud, her husband uh, got uh, injured and then it was, it was too strong and he died after a few months from that. Then the Prophet ﷺ, uh, proposed to her and he got her uh, and he married her with some uh, children who were uh, with her as orphans. And, uh, and, and she was, as I said, a very wise woman. She reported many of the ahadith from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and her death was in Medina, in the Al-Qa'da, in the year uh, 59th of Hijrah. She was the last one of all the Prophet's wives to, uh, to die. Peace be upon him and may Allah be pleased with her. You know, Um Salama had this very interesting uh, story in Hudaybiya where she, uh, the Prophet ﷺ asked the uh, companions to complete their Umrah there and to um, return to Medina and make Umrah next year. Uh, then everybody did not, they were so eager to go to Mecca and make Umrah. But then Um Salama, and he, he was known what to do, he didn't know what to do. Uh, finally, Um Salama suggested that he does his his own the slaughtering of his own uh, hadi, and then he, alayhi salatu wasalam, did that. And finally, she, uh, you know, uh, everyone uh, raced uh, and hastened into uh, uh, slaughtering his own sacrifice uh, or, or hadi, and therefore she uh, solved the issue for, the, for, for Muslims. So she was a wise woman, radiallahu anha wa ardaha. I will be having more of these, uh, uh, of the wives, of the, the biography of the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the coming episode from these series, glimpses from the uh, fragment 
prophetic biography of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Until the next episode, I leave you with Allah's care and protection. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليماً